I want to welcome you to our 2022 Equity Conference uh, with the theme from here to there, building the social justice bridge. Uh, I am Charles Toombs, CFA president and professor at Africana Studies at San Diego State University. I'm five feet 11, <laughs> medium brown in color, bald headed and I wear glasses. Uh, we will get started in just a minute as we let uh, more folks in. We're all so excited to have you all here with us this morning and throughout the conference, which ends Saturday afternoon following Dr. Cecil Canton's address, and we don't want you to miss that. We have so many dynamic speakers and presentations in store for you over the course of the conference week. Uh, but before we move forward, I would like to turn uh, this over to Nicholas Centino, one of the tri-chairs of the Equity Conference, who will do our land acknowledgement. Thank you, Charles. This is Nicholas. I have a red sweater, glasses, black hair, and there is a visible microphone in my frame. We want to acknowledge that we gather as the California Faculty Association on the traditional land of the indigenous people, past and present, in honor with gratitude the land itself and the people who have stewarded it throughout the generations. This calls us to commit to continuing to learn how to be better stewards of the land we inhabit as well. To recognize the land is an expression of gratitude and appreciation to those whose territory we reside on and a way of honoring the indigenous people who have been living and working on the land from time immemorial. It is important to understand the longstanding history that has brought us to reside on the land and to seek to understand our place within that history. Land acknowledgements do not exist in a past tense or historical context. Colonialism is a current ongoing process and we need to build our mindfulness of our present participation. Acknowledging the land is an important indigenous protocol that we are honoring here today. All right, so, we are all in here for our 11th CFA Equity Conference. Yay! Uh, this one was done on the heels of uh, ratifying a new contract and all of the else that's been happening uh, in the world and for us. And we're so gracious uh, and thankful for the folks who have joined us today and will continue to join us throughout the, the, uh, the, the conference. We're going to have a conversation uh, with uh, CFA Chapter President Charles Toombs, uh, we're, uh, with uh, our Council for Racial and Social Justice uh, Associate Vice President North, uh, Chris Cox, with our Associate Vice President South, Sharon Elise, and with our 2022 Equity Conference Tri Chairs, as uh, Dr. Nicholas Centino. Uh, who hails from the campus of CSU Channel Islands. Uh, we have Dr. Talitha Mantlin, who hails from the campus of uh, CSU San Marcos. And we're also joined uh, by Aparna Sinha, who, uh, Dr. Aparna Sinha, who hails from the Maritime Academy. So we have a, a, an interesting group of folks who had a really, um, I was very thankful to be working for to pull together this year's equity conference. Really, really thankful. So let's first have some comments, some opening comments from, from our CFA president, Charles Toombs. Thank you, Audrina. Uh, and just again, I'm Charles Toombs, uh, professor of Africana Studies at San Diego State and CFA president. First, I would like to acknowledge a few folks who have made this uh, conference week possible. Others have also helped, but these people have been essential in organizing and planning our conference. Kiara Kiki Lee, our events uh, coordinator. Jamila Bellinger, our administrative assistant. Audrina Redman, program director for anti-racism and social justice. Sharon Elise and Chris Cox, AVPs for the Council of Racial and Social Justice, Nicholas Centino, Talitha Maitland, and Aparna Sinha 
our amazing tri-chairs of the conference. We thank all of you for your tireless work and energy in leading this conference. I know I have co-chaired four equity conferences and I know the amount of work that it takes to actually make this happen. The theme for our conference from here to there building the social justice bridge underscores so much of our work and its possibilities in CFA and in the CSU. Today and this week, we come together as both CFA family and as CSU family, centering our common connections to learn additional knowledge to help us make the CSU a better institution for us, for our students, our staff, a system free of systemic oppression. When I think of the theme, I am struck by the word here. For many of us, here was once a there. We have all taken many different paths to get here. We have struggled and pushed many doors that were initially closed to us to get here. And the here is varied, diverse, and nuanced for all of us. We do not know uh, in many important ways each other's stories. We must tell our stories in all the places and spaces that we can. In CFA, we have prioritized telling the stories of our experiences in the CSU in all the work we do. Legislative advocacy, where our testimony has real impact when our faculty and students tell their stories and experiences to legislators. In our communications, we are highlighting our members' stories, showing our humanity as a way to make it clear why our issues are important to us. In our recent two years of bargaining, our bargaining team told their stories and experiences at the table to emphasize why changes were needed to be made in our collective bargaining agreement. And we had many historic gains in our recently ratified contract. Uh, many of them are centered on the work that we are doing and that we will be talking about all week. And I'm just gonna mention a couple. I must mention cultural taxation, the unpaid labor that so many of us have been doing for years. Bias in student evaluations, and we now have the ability to rebut those. Our task force, on alternatives to campus policing, which impacts so many of us as faculty, as students, and as staff. And we tell our stories at the Board of Trustees meetings and our SQE students, these amazing student leaders are the best at letting BOT members know the reality of their experiences as students on our campuses. In 2016, when CFA began its movement to anti-racism and social, uh, social justice transformation, the stories and experiences of our BIPOC women and LGBTQIA plus members were critical in making and pushing forward that transformation. I could go on and on, but being here itself is so complex and driven by our humanity. But we are here. We are in a union that focuses anti-racism and social justice in everything we do. And this is hard and ever-changing work as we learn each day to include more, to take on more work, learn about new issues and concerns, and work to address them. We are always evolving, learning, growing, rethinking, assessing. We must get there. And what is so lovely, challenging, inspirational is that we do not know 
what the there is, we must envision it, think outside of the box, be always ready to look at our work and its goals in new ways. But perhaps what we do know is that our there cannot be what white supremacy culture practice has, been, has produced uh, and its systemic failures. I'm going to end my opening comments with a brief excerpt from a poem by Margaret Walker. And I'm going to read an entire short poem by my other sister author, Alice Walker. In Margaret Walker's For My People, she gives us an illustration of our conference theme. The poem begins with a here and gets us to an envision there. For my people everywhere, singing their slave songs repeatedly, their dirges and their ditties and their blues and jubilees, praying their prayers nightly to an unknown God, bending their knees humbly to an unseen power. And then she gives us many verses of the African-American experience and concludes with a movement to an envisioned there. For my people standing, staring, trying to fashion a better way from confusion, from hypocrisy and misunderstanding, trying to fashion a world that will hold all the people, all the faces, all the people and their countless generations. Let a new earth rise. Let another world be born. Let a second generation full of courage issue forth. Let a people loving freedom come to growth. Let a beauty full of healing and a strength of final clinching be the pulsing in our spirits and our blood. And all of you are my people and we must do the work to transform the CSU. And because our Equity Week is in Women's History Month, I want to read a short poem by Alice Walker, which also talks about the power of envisioning a there. The poem is titled, Women. They were women then, my mama's generation, husky of voice, stout of step, with fists as well as hands, how they battered down doors and ironed starched white shirts, how they led armies, head rag generals across minefields, booby trapped ditches to discover books, desks, a place for us, how they knew what we must know without knowing a page of it themselves. Those are my opening remarks. And since we're having a bit of a dialogue here, uh, I want to just sort of ask some questions that Sharon and Chris can perhaps respond to. Uh, what are you looking forward to learning? What do you want to get out of this conference? Good morning, everybody. I'll, uh, I'll go first, Sharon, unless you would like to. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Chris Cox. I am an African American male. I think I'm medium dark skin. I think I have a nice shade of, uh, of brown. I'm wearing glasses, which I may take off uh, because in the in the time period of COVID looking at computer screens a lot, I have to wear glasses, but sometimes I need to take them off. Uh, I have short hair on the side. My hair goes long in the back. I have dreadlocks and I'm wearing a CFA shirt, although you can't see it. And lastly, my physical description includes my attempt to use a Zoom background, which I rarely do, uh, but I see that mine is mirror image, so it's in reverse. It's nice to be here with all of you. And Charles, to your question, I'd have to say, first, I always have loved coming to the Equity Conference as a CFA member. Uh, it was one of the things that I did early in my time becoming active with CF CFA at the statewide level. And I found it to really be a deep space of learning 
And I found that I started to learn even in spaces where it wasn't something, a topic that I was necessarily interested in or thought that it was something I would learn from, but wind up actually having really profound experiences. Uh, so to my mind at the moment, I'm very excited about all the panels, but I was really excited about Loretta Ross when we had her before. So I'm excited to see her and Lone Tran come and speak with us again about calling in. Uh, I'm very excited to learn more about caste, and I'm also excited to learn more about abolition and policing issues in the CSU. And you know, there's a, such a depth of research in abolition work that I, I think we don't get to hear uh, as often for those of us who might not necessarily be in criminology circles. And so those are things that actually have my attention, uh, have me excited, but quite frankly, I'm open to learning from each of the sessions. I'm also excited to learn more about disability and disability, disability activism disability rights and ways that we can take a step up as a union, as, as faculty on our campuses with regard to disability issues, uh, and just so many more things. I'm looking forward to the whole week, and I'm glad to be here with you. And I'll hand it over to you, Sharon. Thank you, Chris, and thank you, Charles. I'll start with my self-description. I am, <laughs> what am I? <laughs> okay, I'm wearing, um a red turtleneck and a kind of mock herringbone sweater. My hair is puffy curly and it looks weird when I move my head with this Zoom background, which is one of the things I really annoys me about that Zoom background is it doesn't treat my hair right, just like our culture. Um, what else can I say? I'm a lighter shade of brown, but I am a proud black woman. My attitude is blackity black, black all the time, 24 seven. I'm so pleased to be here. And I first have to just respond, Charles, you just melted my heart with that poetry. Those are two of my favorite pieces. I know the words. I could hear them in my head as you were saying them. And I just really thank you for your amazing vision and your amazing presence as you lead this union. I am so grateful for you. And I have such gratitude for all the people that are pinned here on this Zoom room who have labored so much for this conference. Um, and I just wanna comment on that very briefly to say, never has an equity conference been put together so swiftly. And that I am just amazed by the richness of this program. There are people who are very familiar to me in terms of their work, like Loretta Ross, like Gloria Ladson Billings, who I am thrilled to have here, given the discourse in the country on critical race theory and the fact that so many people don't know what it is that they are condemning. We in CFA need to really become conversant with CRT, as we call critical race theory, and its promise for education and why that is viewed as such a peril to white supremacy and those who unwittingly or wittingly endorse and follow it. So I think that's very important. I think in terms of our work as the Council for Racial and Social Justice, which sponsors this conference, we really need to go deeper. We're always saying we need to go broader in what we attend to and in the things we're used to attending to, we need to go deeper. So I am so pleased to see these amazing speakers and their titles for their sessions to help us learn more about ableism in our country. I know every time we start to even attend to it, we're amazed by how much it is just filtered into our everyday language. And so I'm looking forward to becoming more sensitized to those issues so that I can be more of an advocate. And I am particularly always happy to be in everyone's company here because uh, I know when I entered academe, the idea of attending to these issues was seen as very marginal and unimportant. And it's just still amazing to me after many years in academe, that now we have people who are all committed 
to changing the institution. And so I really am excited to just be in everyone's company as we witness these speakers and these um, sessions. I'm also very happy to see the return of our Trans 101 workshop. And that is just fantastic. It's really well presented. It's informative and humorous. And we, ha we just have some great presenters and there's people I've never heard of and topics that I know very little about. I'm excited about the immigration panel. I know people have been working on that for the whole last semester and very excited ab about the work that that group is doing, as well as the work on police abolition and offerings from our newest caucus, the PAM caucus, Palestinian, Arab and Muslim. So we have so much to offer and I just really wanna thank our tribe chairs for all their work under and with the direction of the amazing Audrina Redmond. Well, that was a segue of uh, me saying you're too gracious, but thank you, uh, thank you. So I wanna hear from our tri chairs, uh, Nick, Talitha and Aparna, uh, the talk about your experience uh, chairing, uh, co-chairing, tri-chairing this equity conference, which we jammed through in about two and a half months here, uh, which was record time because normally we give ourselves at least nine months of, of leeway, uh, but we had to deal with bargaining and a host of other issues and we did it. I think we came up with a truly dynamic program. So just want to hear from y'all, you know, talking a little bit about how we came up with this title, um, how we came up with our themes and uh, other things you want to tell people about what you're excited about and the CEUs we have this year for the first time. So I'm going to throw it to uh, whichever one of you wants to get started. Um, I can start a part on Nick if that's okay. Yeah. Okay. Thanks so much, Audrina. Um, I'm Talitha Maitland, the STEM librarian at Cal State San Marcos. And like Audrina said, one of the tri chairs of this conference. And thank you, Audrina, before for awarding me an honorary PhD, but I'm not a doctor. Uh, so you can just call me Talitha Maitland, or if you want to be super formal, you can call me Ms. Maitland. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a biracial Vietnamese American cis woman. I have medium length dark hair, and my pronouns are she, her. So Adrina asked us like how we came up with the title and themes for this conference. And I think so much of it came out of the, the bargaining. We were just immersed in bargaining, all of us and all of you who are here too. Um, and so our title um, from here to there, building the social justice bridge, it really emerged off of like acknowledging where we've come from previous equity conferences, how we've really built up this uh, knowledge base amongst ourselves and CFA about where we want to, what we want to be doing with uh, anti-racism social justice work and figuring out like, okay, we've, we've won this historic contract. Where do we want to go from here? So that's where the from here to there came from. Um, over the last couple of years, we've been doing a lot of visioning about where we imagine ourselves going. Um, at the end of this conference, the, the closing keynote, and I really can't think of a more fitting closing for our equity conference. Dr. Cecil Canton is going to be uh, giving us, walking us through CFA's huge and momentous transition from a straight up bread and butter union to one that is a, so, what is social justice unionism through the Council for Affirmative Action to what is now uh, that Council for Racial and Social Justice. So thinking about where we want to go, how we're going to get there is how we came up with our conference title. And it was really like <laughs> an hour of Aparna, Nick, myself and Adrina, just like banging our heads together virtually, trying to figure out where we wanted to go. And once I think Nick said, well, why don't we do these things? We, it just clicked and we went, oh yes, that's, that's where we wanna go. And Nick and Aparna, do you want to talk about our themes? Sure. Hi, everyone. I am Aparna Sinha. Uh, I am a faculty at CSU Maritime Academy. Uh, I am a brown um, Indian American. I uh, have really long black hair. 
and uh, I'm still figuring out how to wear my glasses because I just got them last week because I can't <laughs> see anymore. <laughs> um, our journey for our theme uh, really stemmed from um, our successes from the last year um, and how everybody was still talking about uh, some of our sessions from last year. Um, and so we realized that we need to continue talking about creating pathways for collaboration. Um, uh, we realized that we wanted to envision uh, radical different futures and therefore we had the hair uh, from here to there. Um, and we wanted to uh, talk about hyper visible labor uh, unionism in the CSU and definitely the care and healing that, you know, that we need to take care of uh, ourselves because we go through a lot of uh, cultural taxation and a lot of, um, um, you know, fighting for our union and fighting for our rights. Um, so the future um, that, that we wanted to envision was something that, you know, that um, the dynamics of oppression, privilege, and isms, recognizing that society is the product of historically rooted, institutionally sanctioned stratification along socially constructed group lines that indicate race, class, gender, sexual orientation, and ability. And so we wanted to overcome all of these isms and oppressions and privileges. And so our themes um, emerged from um, fighting all of this. Nick, you wanna talk about um, care and healing a little bit more? Absolutely. So as we develop the themes for, for the conference this year, we really wanted to both have elements that uh, invited us to envision the future, right? Um, you know, absolutely with the, the summer of George Floyd, a lot of us made a promise that, you know, we will never go back to business as usual, you know, when, when we get when we get back to campus, back to our lives after the pandemic, that, you know, there's just some practices that, was, that we will not return to. And so envisioning what that future it will look like is one thing that we really wanted to have as an element of our conference. But in addition to that, what are strategies that we need right now? What are practices that we need right now in this very moment uh, as we build towards that future? And so uh, our themes, uh, you know, as, as mentioned, strategies for collaboration um, alongside with uh, work within care and healing justice really stood out to us as vital elements that we wanted to um, have available for people to uh, get together, educate uh, ourselves, but also um, collaborate and, and, and conspire with each other. I love it. And I, and I appreciate it working with y'all because um, we, we have a mindfulness, I believe, uh, that's helped by our CFA interruption practice statement, but surely we have a mindfulness about what's the next you know, how are we continuing to grow? How are we manifesting ourselves as the learning organization uh, that we want to be? I mean, if, we, if we're constantly learning, we're never quite there, right? Which is a good thing, I think. Um, I'm curious though, from you tri-chairs, um, what is it that you personally are looking forward to learning and hope to get out of the conference? That's a, a big question because my immediate answer is all of it. I want to go to, I'm gonna to go to every single session. I hope to learn so much because um, I think back to the first equity conference that I went to, which was in 20, February, 2020, our last in-person one. And how, I don't think this is unique to me. This is so true for so many of us who are involved in CFA and who come to equity conference. It was an eye-opening transformative few days for me going to the sessions, learning, being in community with the people around us as we're, um, as we're all agreeing, like, this is what we want to learn. We want to get better, do better, have some consciousness building, and then see where we want to go was really, really transformative. The other thing is, and we don't necessarily get the same experience online, but we can see the names of people. I remember going to that first conference and looking around the room and saying, oh, this is, these are the, this is where I feel comfortable. This is like a space where I get to come. That is my CSU siblings who are, are agreeing that we all want to do the same thing together. 
And so you people may have noticed, they probably did, that our program this year is a little bit different than past programs. You've heard us talk about like the compressed planning schedule compared to previous years. And so usually for people who've come to these before, you'll have we'll have lots of sessions that are led by caucuses, by the CRSJ caucuses. And we still have the involvement of the caucuses in moderating the sessions and in uh, working with our speakers that we brought in from outside the CSU. Um, a couple of other people have already talked about Loretta Ross and Lone Tran, how they're going to be here talking about the call in versus call out culture and um, a specific to how that looks in academia. I think that's a great thing for us all to start um, to just constantly practice. Similar, I think our interruption practice statement embodies the call in, uh, calling in versus calling out. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, Laurent Ash Corrales, I'm excited to learn from um, looking at I think 21 years of organizing in these varied spaces and how um, how they are able to show up as a multiply, multiply, I think that's the right word, identifying person, like how they can bring all of their identities to their organizing work and how it makes it stronger. And I want to learn from that, like how can I make sure that I'm able to show up whole in all of these spaces. Um, Dr. Gina Garcia, I think we're talking about uh, servingness in Hispanic serving institutions. And um, what, does, what does servingness actually look like? We say that we serve these student populations, but what do we do beyond enrolling them? And how do we actually serve them? So I know that's a topic that is uh, a forefront of my mind that I'm really looking forward to learning more about. Um, and then we also have a bunch of CFA specific sessions. I don't know, partner and Nick, do you want to talk about any of those? Uh, yes, I actually, I'm really, really excited about Dr. Gloria Latson Billings session that is tomorrow about critical race theory. Um, I'm also really excited about our final day uh, conference where Dr. Luke Wood will discuss how race lighting manifests in the uh, lives of people of color, Black, Indigenous, and uh, all races. Um, and it, it, I'm really excited about that because I, I, I definitely feel that it is something that I'm learning more about it. And it's something that obviously exists in my life. So I'm really, really uh, looking forward to that. Uh, I'm also really excited about um, learning about caste um, because we've now ratified it in our um, in our bargaining agreement. And so I'm, I'm very excited about people learning more about caste. Um, I'm also um, um, excited about uh, acknowledging and caring for our trans siblings. I'm, you know, the fact that, you know, I feel like we need that education constantly. We need to remind ourselves all the time um, and learning about ableism and disability rights. Uh, and, and like you said, um, uh, Dr. Gina Garcia's CSU Hispanic Serving Institution. I'm also really excited about um, Las Doctoras, the care and healing uh, session for uh, the feminine by, you know, led by the feminist um, group. Uh, I think that would be really, really important session because it is, um, it is only open um, for women and uh, our um, binary folks. So I'm very, very excited about those sessions. I'm also excited about Dr. Cecil Canton and, um, and Jen Egan, Dr. Jen Egan um, uh, session. Nick. Yeah, I, you know, all amazing sessions that you mentioned. Um, I wanted to, you know, share my excitement for, um, the track that we have for um, for healing justice, and so I really, really want to uh, draw folks' attentions to um, those workshops and presentations that are coming up uh, each and each and every day. And you know, uh, one thing that we really wanted to do for this conference was have a diverse and varied. Um, array of, of workshops and, and, and speakers. Uh, I know a lot, if you're like me, a lot of us are, are zoomed out, 
right? We're, we're, you know, we've kind of got the Zoom fatigue. And so uh, in thinking about a program that's going to, you know, want people to log in, want people to join uh, for, um, for, for the day and, and make the sessions that they wanted to make, we really did our best to, um, you know, recruit folks from outside CFA who are experts in their field and recruit within CFA to, uh, to really skill share uh, amongst ourselves as CFA siblings. Yeah, so uh, 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 sounds exciting. I totally am looking forward to this, uh, and I particularly look forward um, to the survey responses. Uh, so following each one of our uh, sessions, there will be a survey link uh, dropped in the, the Q&A for you, in the chat for you uh, participants to complete. We really do want that feedback. It helps us to plan. Um, the equity conference used to be every other year and now it's every year so we're having to think and reflect quickly uh, about what the next conference will be so even more critical to make sure that we're getting your feedback but so so to leave that back to you just you know um, what is it that you think you want other folks to take away from from the conference because there's there's a lot here yeah, totally. Um, I think uh, feeling a community with our CFA siblings um, and uh, maybe a, a refocusing because as I think it's come through in so many of our conversations, there's just like this going on over here, this going on here where a lot of us are doing so much stuff. And what Sharon mentioned in the beginning about um, deepening some of our practices. So maybe refocusing so that we can deepen. Um, and you were talking about some of the new stuff. So we were uh, going from two years to one year. And did you mention the CEUs? Uh, I no, remember. I haven't yet. Please do. Okay. Um, so new this year, we have a couple of things. Uh, first of all, I wanted to highlight our continuing education credits that if people, if those are useful to people in your work, you can register for, I think there is, they've gone out in the um, highlights, but they're probably also on um, the equity conference page, but if not, we can, you can contact any of us, we'll get it sent to you. And that fee for the CEUs would be reimbursed if you have your receipt and everything. Um, also new this year, we um, have our newest caucus in CRSJ, Palestine Arab and Muslim Caucus, and they're going to be hosting a panel talking about their experiences and things that are important to their caucus. So um, I think that they've referred to this as like their coming out party. So um, having those two things as highlighted for um, attendees, I think will be really good for people to be aware of and to go to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we talked for a couple of different cycles about uh, figuring out how do we offer CEUs. And thankfully, um, our union sister, Susan Green was able to help us make that a reality uh, so that uh, faculty who want to engage in that and um, uh, will do so. Uh, and you can access that information and other information about this conference on the CFA homepage at www.calfac.org. Uh, you just click on, on the uh, right up top there you click on it and you'll go to a landing page where there are all sorts of links to all kinds of conference information for you. So, uh, so uh, uh, Parna, uh, what is it that you're hoping to, uh, to grab out of the conference? Um, I, I'm, I'm really excited about walking that metaphorical social justice bridge mm -hmm. um, that, that will help us get to our future, uh, our manifested future. So I'm hoping to gather a lot of um, tools um, and understanding about research and policies and practices that will advance our goal and our, you know, our desire for the future, which is racially and socially just in education and in our communities. Great. I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna piggyback off of what you said. I I 
personally, I would like to see racially, economically, politically, all of those socioeconomic, uh, politically just world. Uh, but you know, and we can do our part to manifest a little piece of that uh, in our in our lane, which is the Cal State University system and our own union, the California Faculty Association. So, um, what about you, Nick? What about you? Um, you know, to be honest, I'm really looking forward to the conversations, the debriefs that we have once we get back to our campuses. You know, Ooh. after the, after every equity conference, whether we're virtual, whether we're in person, the opportunity to uh, chit chat with uh, with delegates, so to speak, folks from my campus that I was able to reach out to, recruit to come, folks who I may not have had had an opportunity to uh, collaborate with or, or or even you know chit chat with. Uh, Equity Conference has really provided me the opportunity to get to have a reason to reach reach out to folks, to invite people to get involved uh, a little bit more with their union, get involved with the issues that we're all passionate about. And so I know that you know for this conference, you know a, a, a lot of the materials and and sessions are being made available after the fact. So I know that you know calfact.org, there's a special Equity Conference page. I believe it's calfact.org slash equity dash conference uh dash 2022 and and all that material uh is is available for folks who registered you've got that in your email inbox and that will be accumulating all the sessions all the um you know um fact sheets and etc that we have uh available here this weekend so i'm really looking forward to the work that we get done after the conference mm -hmm. right so I'm, I'm curious what uh what it is that uh Sharon and Chris and Charles might hope that participants take away from the conference also. Charles, especially you, I mean, you you were, gosh, you and I uh, 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 co-chaired, uh, worked on the conference four times. Four times. <laughs> you remind me, cause I said, I was thinking three. And then when you said four, I was like, oh yeah, that's right. Four times, yeah. Um, I think that, um... Talitha and Aparna and Nicholas in talking about the various sessions and presenters have really emphasized what I want folks to take away. This is an opportunity to learn, uh, to again, think outside of the box, to find ways to help us do the work and to do it better. Uh, so that's what I want folks to take away from the conference. Learn something new. That's why we go to conferences. Uh, think of this conference as any kind of conference. You go there to learn something new, to be exposed to new lens. Um, so that's what I want. And there's so many opportunities in this amazing program that uh, our tri chairs have put together. There's just so many opportunities to learn something. Uh, I've signed up for every top, every session. <laughs> So I know many of you have as well. <laughs> All right, uh, Chris, what about you? What do you hope? What are you hoping folks will take away? Yeah, my response is very similar to Charles, and I agree with Nick and Talitha and Aparna and many things that they've said. I would say for me personally, I, I think sometimes in these situations it's good to think. I like to think on a couple of different levels. One is, what do I really want to gain personally? That's something that I need that maybe I don't have. So if I look through any conference I go to, I'll look through the schedule and try to see what, where is it that there is something here that helps me to fill maybe either a gap in my knowledge or a gap in, in something that I'm working on, something that I need. Uh, so I try to think about that. How, do, how, can it, how can I learn something that will enrich me as a person? And that's the personal side of it. And then in this context, I also think it's important to think about the group as well. So what is something that we can either learn, that we can take back with our work, with our groups, whether it's maybe our campus groups, uh, you know, community groups that we work with in our work as CFA activists or in our work as faculty, and how can we use that to enhance or further a particular goal? And in this case, we've got a lot of demands. We have a lot of things we've worked on in the last couple of years since the advent of COVID, right? We've had a lot of things to pivot to, to jump to. We also created our anti-Black racism demands in the wake of the George Floyd, Breonna Taylor killings. We've responded to uh, Asian hate crimes. Uh, so I think there are several things that are uh, opportunities for us in this equity conference for us to deepen the work that we've already been doing and also to generate new ideas for things that we want to do in the future. And so I think there's that kind of personal side as well as how does it benefit the group 
Uh, and then usually from that, you find that whatever you think benefits you personally also has an impact on the group and whatever you think benefits the group often has an impact on you personally. So I like to think of it that way because it helps me to reinforce that what I learn not only should enhance me as a person, but it also should have some sort of impact on groups and other people around me. Also, when we as an organization have a conference like this, uh, it should affect me in terms of what it does for the broader group and then how it actually helps us to work together to our collective goals. So that's, that's what I'm really looking forward to is kind of blending that, that personal with the group uh, learning opportunity. Well said, Chris, well said. Sharon, what are you hoping uh, folks were taking? <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say, you know, really thinking about those things we share, we are scholars, we're a community of scholars, we're a community of activists, we're here as an activist expression of our work to advance anti-racism and social justice, and we are all educators. So I think what we can take away is really I don't know why I'm thinking of fuel, maybe because the gas prices are scary now, but I've <laughs> <laughs> got to say, yeah. um, I think that what we will take away is going to fuel our activism, deepen our scholarship and send us searching for more because I know every time I learn some new names and new concepts, I want to go look them up and really think about how I can incorporate these things also into my pedagogy, because um, all of these issues, you know how we like to say faculty working conditions are student learning conditions. So I think of this as how is it gonna inform that? How we work on behalf of faculty to improve working conditions, being mindful of all the different experiences our faculty are having on campus and how we can address those in the context of being CFA, but also how we can transform our pedagogies, which are really sorely tested by the kind of COVID conditions we've been laboring under. So I'm really hoping that this will help to lift people up and encourage them in all of this work, because certainly we have all been put to the test these last couple of years. Uh, that would be true. And what is it that you said about uh, the folks on the other side of the bargaining table that they were seemingly from another planet? Living in an alternate universe. Alternate universe, that's One it. we do not want to inhabit. <laughs> I had just one short uh, comment. It's in relationship to something that uh, Chris said uh, regarding the collective, uh, and it just makes me think of sort of the uh, the Afri West African ethos that guides so much in my own teaching and thinking and 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 being. Is that I, I am because you are, and because you are, I am. Uh, and it really is our collective work, and we all have to take a piece of it and do something with it. Uh, and then one other uh, topic that hasn't been mentioned that I'm also looking forward to uh, this week is race lighting uh, by Dr. Luke Wood from San Diego State. Yeah, Luke is looking, Luke is excited to be with us as well, especially as a former CFA intern. It's so wonderful to see how far he's come and to see his impact, not only on San Diego State, but on the CSU and education, the education community in general. So I think uh, everybody, uh, all of our folks should have a good idea of what we have coming up, uh, waiting for you with this conference. We tried to take a really good focus uh, at areas of importance uh, as related to our constituency caucuses. So we have a little, we have something for everyone. Uh, there could always be more. Uh, and I'm going to invite people to get engaged. If you are not currently engaged with your chapter, uh, there's always the position at every chapter of the Council of Racial and Social Justice Rep. Uh, those folks need a team of people to help them to do that work. 
these practices that you will see us engaging in throughout this conference are something that we hope to have um, trickle to the campus level uh, more broadly. Uh, and not only just at our CFA chapter meetings, but really quite frankly, at your department meetings. But let's uh, work with us as we help you to figure out how to make that space to address those issues that hang around like the elephant uh, that we never want to talk about, but we all know that it's there. Uh, and we'll never get past that until we are able to, one, acknowledge the issue and address the issue. And that's what I think, to me, that's a large part of what our equity conference is about, is helping us to develop shared language and shared understanding about the issues of importance to us so that we can uh, raise those issues in the way that we do in the legislature, uh, with our negotiations with our chapter local administrations that the chapter campus level, as well as with the, the uh, chancellor's office and those folks and other folks who are vested and interested in education.